Alright, so let's get started and make sure that we have our library imported and working properly. Now, as part of the documentation, you will find instruction on inst regarding the installation. Um, pip install yahoo underscore fin, that's all that you need to do. And since there are many methods here, there will be some other packages that will be required for some of them. So it's not really necessary that you install them all now, but if you run into an error that's mentioning any of these libraries, that means that the method requires that library to be installed so it can get the data for you. The structure of the screen, as you can see, is divided into two parts. On the right side, I have some links that are relevant for the purpose of the tutorial. And on the left side, I have a Python file, which I'll be using to write the code as we go. The next, of course, the next part is once you have everything installed, we need to import this Yahoo Finance library and make sure that it works that we can get some data out of Yahoo Finance. So there are a few ways that you can import um, the library. I prefer this one, which is quite self-explanatory. So from Yahoo Fin, we're going to import this stock info. Although I do not want to import it as SI, although stock info makes sense to be abbreviated as SI, I'm going to use YF as abbreviation. So Yahoo Finance, because at the end, that's what we're going to be using. It's Yahoo Finance that we're going to use to use this method. So Yahoo Finance, for example, to get balance sheet, Yahoo Finance to get cash flow and so on. So in my opinion, this is a better abbreviation. So I'll stick with that one. Now let's take a look into these methods because basically once you know how to use one of them, you'll know how to use all of them. If you want to get a balance sheet, if you just click on um, the link here, it will transfer you to the part of the website that's appropriate, that has more information on that. And as you can see here, there is an example of using um, this method to get the yearly balance sheet for Netflix. So this is what we're going to do. Let's, let's try to do, to get the balance sheet. And let's also see what this yearly true is. And also, um, one more important thing is that you need to keep in mind of the last annual report because the companies do not publish their annual or quarterly reports at the same time. So if you're comparing the last annual report for Netflix in this case and with Coca-Cola, you would have a year difference because, well, Coca-Cola has not published yet the 2020 annual report, at least at the time of this recording. So ticker, let's have Netflix. And the way we're going to access these methods or any other methods is, let's store it as a balance sheet. YF, so Yahoo Finance, followed by a dot, and then afterwards you need to just pass the method that you're going to be using. So in our case, it's get balance sheet. Um, this yearly equal to true, I'm not going to pass for the reason that it's by default true, so it doesn't really add any value to have it. But if you want to have the quarterly balance sheet, then you need to specify yearly equals false. For the balance sheet, um, of course, and same as for all the others, as you, if you can, if you maybe you already know, but Yahoo Finance provides the annual, but also the quarterly um, financial statements. So it really depends on what it is that you will be using this data for. Sometimes annual makes more sense. Sometimes quarterly makes more sense. So this is how you would get the date. So let's print the balance sheet of Netflix. And let's see how far that gets us. All right. So as you can see, we have four columns, which means we have the balance sheet for the last four years. We can check that by printing balance sheet dot columns. So these are the four years we in order if you if you want to access a given year because normally what we would do is if you take a look at the Piotrowski F score we would need to calculate the return on assets and give one point if it's positive in the current year and otherwise zero now that is normally um, a ratio between the net profit and uh, the total assets but you would get the same uh, result if you just check if the net profit is greater than zero so that is another approach, but what you would need to do is, well, what we would need to do is get uh, some amount from the financial statement. So let's try the following. 
Um, I think I have Coca-Cola already here. So let's use Coca-Cola because here we already have the financial statements just to make sure that the data that we get out is, is correct from what we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'll use Coca-Cola as a ticker. And let's see. So the total assets here are 863. Let's make sure that that matches. So total assets. All right. So that's good. So at least we can cross check the data that, that we are getting the last figures. But keep in mind that now we have 2019 as the final year. While if you go back to Netflix, you will see that it's 2020. So make sure again, don't, don't confuse the dates and don't compare uh, companies that have just different um, years. Otherwise, it, yeah, it's not really a nice conclusion that you can make. Now, normally, if you want to access these total assets, what you need to do is, because this is a pandas data frame, maybe we can also print type of balance sheet. So the data that we get back regarding the, the financial statement, we have a data frame. We can access these total assets by first providing the year and then the assets. So what I mean by that is let's have a list where we're going to store the years. So years would be equal to balance sheet dot columns. Oh, should be this balance sheet dot columns. And now if we print balance sheet and then years zero, which is the latest year, we would get the balance sheet for the, the most recent available year. If we have the same years being one, we would have the balance sheet for the year before two the year before and so on. But now once we have this, once we have accessed the year, we can have one more drill down to whatever account it is that we would like to access. So maybe we would like to take a look into the cash. Well, we just pass cash and we get uh, the cash amount, which is this one. Now, once we have that account, we can use it to make the calculation that are, of course, part of the Piotrowski F score. We would not need the cash, but we would be needing other accounts. So this is how you would access. But how can we make sure that this works for all companies and not just for this one? Well, we need to make sure that we have a function that takes all this into account. Now, what is it that we would be needing ultimately? Well, let's do it like this. We would need the balance sheet. We would need the income statement, the cash flow statement and the years. Right, so these are four information that we would need in order to make the calculation regarding the um, strength of the financial position of companies. Now this ticker, at the moment we have Netflix, but we would not want to use one ticker. Instead, we would like to check for all S&P 500. So instead of having ticker, we will have tickers, which would be equal to Yahoo Finance dot. And then here there's a, already a method tickers underscore S and P 500. So simple as that. We have all the tickers for S and P um, stored into this variable. And now we can iterate through them to run our functions, but the functions we do not have yet. So let's create the first function, which would be get data. Normally the there is only one thing that we need in order to get the data and that's the ticker. So once we have the ticker, we would have, all right, balance sheet, we would be the balance sheet that we get from Yahoo Finance for the ticker. Um, years would be the columns, but we would need a lot more than that. Of course, we would need, let's start with um, income statement as well and cash flow statement. So what would they be equal to? Well, we have exactly the same approach. First, Yahoo Finance dot and then the method. So in this case, we need, for example, cash flow. And then we pass the ticker income statement. So it would be get income statement and then ticker. And simple as that, we have the balance sheet income statement and cash flow statement for all um, companies that we are going to run this function for. Now, the only thing that we need to do is we, we want to use this data that we get from this function for further analysis. And with the current structure, we won't be able to do so because that once the data runs, it does not modify these lists that we have outside of it. 
So we need to make sure that we need to, we, we bring them into the function. And we do that by specifying global balance sheet, global income statement, global cash flow statement, and global years. Now, once we run this for a given ticker, these would be um, accordingly changed. So for a purpose of just for testing purposes, let's do get data for Coca-Cola. Keep in mind, it does not print anything. All it does is it just stores it into. So if we have income statement, you will see that the structure is exactly the same in terms of we have still four columns. We have, of course, different rows. Balance sheet, it works. Cash flow statement, it works. Um, the information that we get back are useful and we will be able to use them for calculating different ratios. One thing uh, that you need to keep in mind that the structure makes no sense uh, at the, the way it is currently presented because it starts with investments, for example, uh, this is for the cash flow statement, then change of total change to liabilities. If you take a look at the balance sheet, it starts with intangible assets, then capital surplus, but then total liability. So it's not it's not structured in a way a normal financial statement would look like. It just describes the data, but it's not properly arranged. But it doesn't really matter because we, we don't really need the proper structure in, for, for this purpose. But just keep in mind that you don't um, think that some data is missing. That's not the case. So I think for this initial part on getting the financial statements, we're, we've, we've done quite a good job because we have all the tickers. Now we can use this list. Maybe what we can also do is uh, print tickers just to make sure that that works. So we have the S&P 500 tickers. So sure enough, it does. We have the tickers. Uh, it's updated. Basically what it does is it scrapes the tickers from Wikipedia, which is what we, if, if this library didn't exist, we would have done that ourselves. Luckily, it's already built in, so we've saved 10 minutes of our time, or maybe more or less. So we have the tickers, we're going to iterate through them, we're going to get the data, and then basically maybe we can even set a structure for the next tutorials, which would be for ticker in tickers. First, get data for the ticker, and then the next parts would be, well, related to the Piotrowski F score would be, let's see, profitability, of the ticker, which is something that we're going to analyze. Maybe I don't think maybe we don't even need to specify the ticker here. Probably not. So it would be just profitability, um, leverage, and operating efficiency. So these are the next three parts which would be covered in the next tutorials. And normally, uh, instead of running it for all 500 tickers, we would just for for the purpose of testing, we would be running it, for example, from zero to ten for the first ten, or maybe randomly for forty to fifty, or so on, just to make sure that it works. But not in in terms that we we are not going to run it for all until the entire script is completely done. So for the purpose of this tutorial, this is sufficient. We know how to get the data. We also know how it's structured, and we also know how to access the information that we need for a particular account in a particular year. Then I'll see you in the next tutorial.